Okay, and welcome to this week's second case study. So this this one we're going to look at lung capacity. So it's called the FEV data set. There's lots of forms of the FEV data set, but this one, we've got 654 children, age 6 to 22, and it's from the 1980s, Boston, Massachusetts, so we're looking at respiratory disease. And what we're looking at is things like smoking status and age. So let's read it in. So we've got an ID for each individual subject. We've got age, lung capacity, FEL, FEV. We've got height, sex, and smoker. And again, this is going to be one of these examples of when you have variables or covariates, you really need to take into account. So one of the things they were looking at in this is smoking and its effect on lung capacity. So you can say that the treatment in this case is smoker, you know, and you've got non-smoker or current smoker, and you want to look at lung capacity. But you've got to be careful you take things into account. So first of all, let's do some EDA. So we've got age, FEV and height, these are all numeric. We've got sex, which is a categorical, and smoker, which as I said has two levels, um, non-smoker and current smoker. Um, first of all, we'll look at lung capacity. Um, what you can see here, these are normally a little bit right skewed. I'm going to make, take a log transform to just deal with that skewness there. You could check that. You've got the data. You go and have a look at the box cocks to see if I'm doing the right thing. But the first thing we should do is we should say, you know, let's have a look at our lung capacity against smoker. And this is the problem is you can jump to conclusions at this point. So have a quick look at that and think about what it says. What does it say? Basically, it's saying that if you're a non-smoker, you have lower lung capacity than if you're a smoker. You know, here we've got lung capacity. You can see the median here is higher than the median here. You know, and if you just used that, if you just stopped to that point and ignored the rest of the data, you might go and report to your collaborators and go, yeah, smoking's great. It improves your lung capacity. But there's other stuff going on there. And you have to think about your data. Think what I said. These are a whole load of, what do we say, children aged 6 to 22. So let's start looking at other stuff that could have an effect in there. So first of all, we've got age. What do we notice? As you get older, your lung capacity increases. Makes sense. I mean, we've got people down at 4 or 5 down here. Of course, your lung capacity is going to get better. So as I said, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the log of FEV and use that as our predictor. And the first thing we're going to do, let's say we're going to do the most naive thing. We're going to look at the log of lung capacity against smoker and ask the question, does smoking affect lung capacity? Yes, it does. A very significant response here. But does it pass a stupidity test? Look at this. We've got a negative. We're basically saying that if you go from smoker to non-smoker, you decrease negative, you decrease your lung capacity by about 0.27 litres. Think about that. If you just took lung capacity and treatment and put it in there, you'd say, yep, yeah, again, smoking significantly increases lung capacity because if you become a non-smoker, you decrease. But we've already noticed we've got these other covariates. So let's start with the simplest covariate, age. So age and smoker. Age, a significant effect. Now, smoker still has significant effect, but look carefully. Now the signs changed. And this is a classic example. I mean, we were lucky in this one because we knew that smoking decreases lung capacity. But you can see it here now. As soon as I have age in my model, you've completely flipped the relationship. Now, once you take into account age, smoking decreases your lung capacity. Because what's it saying? It's saying as you go from smoker to non-smoker, your lung capacity increases. We can actually summarize that. We can have a nice little picture where what I've got here is I've got the lung capacity on the y-axis, the age. You can see that as you get older, your lung capacity goes up. But look here, I've also colored by smoking status. To some extent, you can see the difference here between people of the same age with their smoking. This is non-smoker, this is smoking. You see the decrease. And once people start smoking, you see that their lung capacity is decreased compared to what it could be. Fine, we were lucky there, because we went, of course, 
you know, smoking we know decreases lung capacity. But now let's look at something that we're not quite sure about. So let's now look at lung capacity and gender or sex. In this particular case, we see that on average, males have a bigger lung capacity than females. And you go, oh, there you are, there's a sign, you know, it comes to sport, of course, males do better, they have better lung capacity. But again, you've got to be careful. This time it's, it's subtle. Because this time we think it agrees with our preconceived ideas. We believe that males have bigger lung capacity than females. But maybe that's not the case. Again, we've got covariates. Let's think deeper about this. What about if we took into account height? What about if we said, well, let's have height in there as a measure of general physique. So now I'm going to fit a model that has our lung capacity, sex and height. Now when we do it, no, males no longer have a bigger lung capacity. Most of the difference in lung capacity between males and females is that on average males are taller, they have a bigger lung capacity. It's nothing to do with general fitness, it's nothing to do with anything like that. It's just the fact that on average males are bigger or as measured by height and they have this bigger lung capacity. So again, this is another one where we should put all the covariates in and be careful about that. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish and sort of a little bit of a prelude to next week where we start doing model selection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fit everything in this model. I've got this big full model. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do log of lung capacity. I'm going to do sex, height, age, and smoke, the whole thing. And then I'm going to use a model selection. This one, I'm going to use a backwards step procedure using AIC. So this is gone and it's fitted our final model. It's decided that I don't need to move anything. They're all pretty good predictors. And what I'm going to do now, I've got that final model, which you call FEC M5. I'm going to have a look at it. And we've got a lot of predictors here and I could plot against each predictor, but there's a nice little package called the GG effects. And what I'll do is I'll load this and then we'll run GG predict and see what it does. What it does is it takes every single predictor in my model and it does a prediction for me. But if you think about it, because we've got all together four predictors, it needs to work out what, how to adjust for the other predictors. It's doing what we call a marginal prediction. So for here, it's predicting that for female, the predicted lung capacity is 0.9 in the log terms, remember? While for male, it's 0.93. And what it does, it tells us how we've, it's adjusted. So it's set height in this to 61.14. What's that value? It will have taken the mean of the height for all the subjects. It's taken an average age. With the smoker, you have a categorical. What's it done there? It's taken the mode. It's taken the most common. So what it's doing is it's setting everything to the average and then predicting. It's what we call a marginal prediction. Here's height. It's taken sex to be male, which is the most common, age to be 9.93, smoke to be none, and then it's chosen a whole load of values, the height, and it's given as the predicted. And it also gives us 95% confidence intervals. It does the same for age, and it does the same for smoker. So it's a really nice, quick way of looking at our data. It's setting everything to your marginals, and then going from there, okay? So the other thing you can do is you can do a plot. Let that go and wait. And it will do for every single predictor a plot. So let's go back to the first one, which is, oops, gone too far, the sex one. So it's given us our 95% confidence intervals. It's marginalized over the rest. It gives our predicted values for lock FEV. So here's the female, here's the male. So we can see there is a difference, but not a huge difference. Here we see our height. As height increases, your log FEV increases. Here is the same for age. And finally, here's the same for smoking and non-smoking. So a nice way of looking at that final model on AIC. So there you are, two classic examples of you can have a misunderstand the relationships if you don't include other covariates as well. So there you are, a load of case studies this week. Next week, we're going to do a lot of model selection and look at how we chose these models. Some of the stuff I've mentioned quite a few times, but we're really focusing on it. Okay, see you next week.